confusing end of our system of school choice, when BASIS was open and students were recruited from our feeder elementary schools, we discovered on the first day of school that over 30 families of our 420 had decided at the last minute to attend BASIS. Because parents are allowed to uh, maintain dual enrollment, we had no advance notice and no opportunity to fill those seats. As a result, our budget was cut over $450,000 for this school year. Although our enrollment went up this school year, 30 children above what we were the previous year, our budget dramatically declined. As a result, we lost eight teachers, eliminating our Spanish program, our computer classes, our guidance counselor, among other positions, leaving our classrooms overcrowded and some of our core subjects gone. Fortunately, we have a strong, engaged community and we were able to advocate to have some of our budget restored, but schools with predominantly low-income families don't have the resources or capacity for that type of advocacy. When their schools are negatively impacted by a new charter, they're often unable to rebound and are left in a cycle of decline. My assumption is that given your backgrounds and your charge as a public charter school board, your interest is in ensuring that all students in the city have access to quality school choices, regardless of family income or mobility. But unfortunately, what we have right now is not a system of school choice, it's a system of school competition, and in reality, it's a system of school cannibalism, in which new schools are opened rapidly and randomly and pull students and therefore budget from existing schools. Whenever there's competition, there's automatically winners and losers, and in this case, the losers are the children. The primary difference between competition and choice is thoughtful, coordinated planning. As an appointed board responsible for half of our public school system and half of our education tax dollars, please show your commitment to quality school choice by one I'm going to ask research. you to submit the rest. Uh, the Can I just say my three statements? No, really, because I've got a list of like 50 people, so they all need to stick to the two minutes. We will read them, I promise. Susan Wells. Uh, my name is Suzanne Wells. I'm testifying today about concerns with the applications for Washington Global, One World Academy, and Washington Leadership Academy. My testimony focuses on three concerns, the impacts the openings these new schools will have on the existing neighborhood public schools, the lack of a demonstrated need for these new schools, and the lack of planning between DCPS and the Public Charter School Board. The neighborhood middle schools in Ward 6 have been particularly hard hit by the openings of Washington Latin and last year basis. In Ward 6, DCPS and the community have been working very hard to strengthen Stuart Hobson, Elliot Hine, and Jefferson. We are experiencing some of the very real downsides to unlimited school choice. Families are crisscrossing the city to attend a myriad of schools and fewer are making the decision to commit to their neighborhood school and working to improve their neighborhood schools. Elliot Hine and Jefferson are on schedule to become certified international baccalaureate middle years programs in 2015. Stuart Hobson is strengthening its museum-based studies program. Similarly, DCPS has invested heavily in the reopened Eastern High School. These schools are all quality schools and are only continuing to improve. The applications of these three schools do not appear to offer anything that is distinctively different or better than any of the schools we already have in Ward 6. There is no planning between the DCPS and Public Charter School Board when decisions are made to open new charter schools. There is no planning on whether the types of programs that charter school operators are proposing to open are needed. There is no planning when decisions are made to modernize the existing public schools. Our city has been investing heavily in modernizing all the public schools. We are spending hundreds of millions of dollars to renovate schools and wards across the city, and the Public Charter School Board will continue to open new schools that draw students from our neighborhood public schools. There must be better planning between DCPS and the Public Charter School Board. Our taxpayer you dollars should not be wasted on the opening of new charter schools. If you want to submit more for the record, thank you. Laura Marks. Hi, good evening. Thanks for allowing me time to comment. 
Um, I had originally intended to speak exclusively about the Washington Leadership Academy application, specifically in regard to their intent to pursue as their upper school location, the Imani Temple site on Capitol Hill, which is across the street from my house. Um, but after the April ANC meeting where they presented, I think I was left with more questions than answers about the need for their particular program. Um, but many of my concerns apply to all of the schools that we've heard from today. I'd summarize these concerns as one, no demonstrated need for these programs, two, detrimental impacts on the existing public schools, three, a complete lack of coordination and planning between the DC educational sectors, four, the incredibly limited public outreach and opportunity for community input on these applications. Um, together with DCPS, the Ward 6 community has invested very heavily, both in terms of money and time, in Elliott Hine, Jefferson, and Stuart Hobson Middle Schools, as well as Eastern High School. Why on earth would we, the taxpayers, citizens, and parents of DC, want to undermine that hard work and investment by opening new schools that are going to cannibalize the existing ones we've committed to? Where's the coordination between the charter sector and DCPS that would ensure new charter applicants are filling real, actual gaps in current offerings, rather than needlessly and inefficiently duplicating existing programming? Where's the collaborative planning that would ensure new schools are cited strategically, facilities funds are expended thoughtfully, and that existing public schools are protected from the predictable enrollment declines and budget cuts generated by the additional competition? Finally, part of this much needed collaborative planning process has to be in an improved public engagement effort. What I've seen with regard to the WLA application has really brought to light how little effort is made to engage with our ANCs, to um, engage with the DCPS school communities, and to engage with the residents. Ma'am, I'm gonna have to do the same as you submit. Thank you. Okay, that is the list, uh, some people weren't here, but that's the list that I had for uh, the second panel. As I said earlier, I, there's a, I have a second list, so let me just see how many of these people are here. Uh, and if you're here, you can have two minutes, but don't, don't move from your seat. I just want to see uh, who's here. Uh, Jim Colby, one. Lauren Boswell, two. Derek Schaefer, Derek Schaefer, Valerie Jablo, three, uh, Andrew Cooper, four, uh, Masef Sarif, five, um, Dhruva Rajendra, I probably butchered your name, sorry, six, <coughs> Nelson Rodriguez, seven, Felda Looper, eight, and Calvin Hadley, nine. Okay, uh, why don't you all come on down in that order. We'll do two minutes, and then the rest, that'll clearly take us after 11. Um, as I said, the rest can then uh, submit for, for the record. So why don't you all come on down? You're first, I think. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jim Colby, and it's a privilege for me to stand before this board and support the application of the Washington Leadership Academy for a new charter school. It was also my privilege to represent the state of Arizona in the United States Congress for 22 years. Now retired from Congress, I spend most of my time as a resident here in the district. During my congressional service, thousands of young people of all ages came through my office. Most were there for a fleeting moment. But even with only a brief glimpse, I think most of them returned home inspired by the government they saw here. Others, like me when I was a teenager more than 50 years ago, served as a page in the House of Representatives. For them, the experience made a lasting, indelible impression. For me, it was a life-changing experience and launched me on a lifetime of public service in the political arena. I know the overwhelming majority of the congresspersons would welcome these young people into their offices. They liked the freshness they add the unjaded questions they ask, the enthusiasm they exude. For the young people who participate in this program, it will be a life-changing experience for many, as it was for me. 
but all of the students will leave the Capitol Hill with a better understanding of how our government works and will be ambassadors wherever they go for our form of government. I can think of no more important legacy for us to leave to the next generation. Finally, let me add that I am a resident of Capitol Hill and active in the community. I believe a charter school with the mission of the Washington Leadership Academy would be enthusiastically embraced by the overwhelming majority of residents. One of the most gratifying changes I have seen during my 28 years on Capitol Hill has been the gradual return of families and school children to the area. The Academy will help accelerate this transformation, one that makes Capitol Hill a more complete neighborhood. Without denigrating any of the other excellent applications for charter schools that you routinely review, I really believe the Washington Leadership Academy has the potential to be one of the most transformative schools in the nation for young people who will learn about our form of government. I urge favorable consideration. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening, my name is Lauren Boswell. I come before you today as a Capitol Hill resident, a former DCPS public school educator, and a former legislative aide on Capitol Hill to offer my strong support for the pro proposal for the Washington Leadership Academy. I strongly believe our community needs this school. I spent several years working as a teacher in DC's public schools, and I was thrilled when I saw this proposal. I immediately thought of the young students that I taught who could see the Capitol from our classroom window, but had no idea what it was or what went on inside. Since I worked in my congressman's office while in high school, it inspired me to devote my career to public service. Becoming civically engaged as a teenager not only informed my current career, I now work at the National League of Cities, but also gave me a calling and passion for civic service through high school and college. Being a part of the democratic process is something I wish that could be shared with more DC high school students. I've always thought our schools could do more to take advantage of the educational resources in DC. And when I look at this proposal, I see a school that truly belongs in the heart of our nation's capital, one of the most important cities, not only in our country, but in the world. I, along with the many parents of children I taught, would be thrilled to send their children to a high school that not only grounds them in the ideals of civic service, but will ground them in the greater Washington, D.C. community they are so often disconnected from. Thank you. Thank you. I am Valerie Jablo, Capitol Hill resident for 23 years and a parent of two DCPS students. I ask that you change how you establish and monitor charter schools on Capitol Hill and in particular Washington Leadership Academy, WLA. We have a stagnant student population in DC, but every year more charters are approved. Thus, filling those charters only happens by depopulating existing schools. That includes the recently renovated but half-empty DCPS Eastern High School on Capitol Hill, which would be a direct competitor with WLA. This problem is highlighted in the applications of WLA and also One World. Feeder elementaries for the latter include charter schools that themselves have taken students away from my local public school. WLA expects that Jefferson Middle School will be a feeder, which already feeds by right into Eastern High School. New charters that start in fifth grade are also problematic. Some otherwise fully enrolled elementaries now struggle to fill fifth grade classes. And because all DCPS middle schools are aligned for grades six to eight, some have found that their feeder schools no longer feed into them. Another problem is oversight. As my ANC saw with WLA's application, the Charter Board's requirements for applications give no assurance that whatever is promised during the application period will be made good, such as WLA's promise to the ANC to withdraw Monty Temple from consideration as a location for the school. So here is the change I want you to, inter to enact, starting with WLA and One World. One, use OSSI data every year to understand exactly who is coming to your schools from what areas and why, and then coordinate with DCPS to avoid wasting public resources and modernizations and duplicative educational efforts. Two, exercise greater fiscal and neighborhood oversight for all existing charters. Three, if a new charter wants to be located in a community with a fully enrolled school or wants to use any of that community's schools as feeders, adopt a higher threshold for acceptance to show that the new charter will offer what local existing schools, including charters, cannot ever offer. After all, isn't that the point of charters? Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Andrew Cooper and I am come before you today as a resident of Capitol Hill, a public servant with more than five years experience on a congressional committee and a Washington DC citizen. I am excited about the prospect of the Washington Leadership Academy. I've been a resident of Capitol Hill since 2008 and I plan to be here for many more years. When I saw that the Washington Leadership Academy is interested in the Capitol Hill community, my interest was immediately piqued. As a resident of Advisory Neighborhood Commission number six, 
I know that our city would benefit greatly from a school of this caliber. I don't just speak for myself, but for other residents of the capital community, both new and old. We need and want the Washington Leadership Academy. More importantly, the students would benefit greatly from the fruits of an involved community. Knowing the Washington Leadership Academy's plan to involve local residents from the layman to the congressman in their events that future representatives from all levels of government and the business community, this is the kind of a school that we need. Finally, I want to emphasize the benefit the Washington Leadership Academy's focus on public service would have for my, when my generation and those younger than me are increasingly divided and cynical about public service. As you noted, Chairman McCoy, many students in our nation's city have barely even seen the Smithsonian. I know this because I work for a branch of government that has approval ratings in the low teens. After looking through the proposal and listening to the presentation tonight, I am convinced that the folks who are putting together the Washington Leadership Academy have the ability to change the way our civic education as we know it. I urge you to approve this application for the Washington Leadership Academy. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Luke Schoenfelder and I'm here to speak on behalf of the Washington Leadership Academy. Um, I'm a tech entrepreneur here in DC and my eight- What's your name? Uh, Luke Schoenfelder, I'm speaking on behalf of Dhruva Rajendra who wasn't able to make it. We have the same company together. I don't see you. Oh, okay. All right. Is Okay. Sorry. You can submit something for the record. Okay. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for giving me the time to speak. My name is Masi Zarif, and I'm here to express my support for the Washington Leadership Academy uh, and to urge the board to approve its application. WLE's focus on civic education is unique in the importance that it attaches to participating in civic life. It's a civics and action ethos and involves the type of learning that only occurs outside the classroom. I'm personally inspired by the WLA's mission to help educate future leaders, future leaders who can make a difference in their local communities, on a national level, and even at a global scale. I work at a think tank here in the district. My colleagues and I focus on analyzing and trying to improve public policy in fields ranging from national security to the economy to our uh, education and healthcare systems. We hire and work with a lot of young people on these issues. And from what I've seen, there are some who inspire confidence that the younger generations will rise to meet the challenges we face. But at the same time, I remain concerned about the general lack of understanding and apathy uh, that's prevalent amongst a lot of uh, folks in the younger generation when it comes to government, when it comes to politics, and the issues that affect us on a daily basis here at home and overseas. I think there's no better place to try to tackle that problem than here in our nation's capital. Speaking from personal experience, my immediate family and I immigrated to the United States 25 years ago. We've lived exclusively in the D.C. area, and I know that thinking back on my experience, uh, my family would have jumped at the opportunity to send me to a school like this. It would give area students, regardless of background, the chance to truly benefit from the tremendous resources that the city has to offer. It would also help them for success not only in the next step of their journey, but also in helping improve their communities and the country's standing. There's a void here, and I believe WLA is bold and ambitious in trying to fill it. I encourage you to support and approve their application. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Nelson Rodriguez. My name is Nelson Rodriguez, and I am here to speak in support of the Washington Leadership Academy. I have known Mr. Andrew for eight years now. I met him when he came to my home in the South Bronx to tell us about my daughter's acceptance into democracy prep through the lottery. He promised that my daughter and my son eventually would receive, if we was to accept the seat, would receive a quality education and be able to go to the college of their <coughs> choice. My, that, that promise became a reality this past year uh, when my daughter uh, chose to go to Nyack Christian College, the, the college of her choice. My son had an IEP, and before coming to Democracy Prep, no teacher or administration took the time to help us in trying to figure out how to help my son in school. Instead, the school called uh, Child Protective Services, uh, figuring that there was a problem in the home. Uh, when we told Mr. Andrew about uh, that my son was a handful, he smiled and said he'll be fine. A year after that, my son entered Democracy Prep, and Mr. Andrew put together a team 
of my son's teachers, along with his counselor and other professionals, to pick apart his IEP and come up with a plan that would work for my son. These, me these meetings did not happen only once or twice, they happened as many times as necessary. Under Mr. Andrews' leadership, his school did not call Child Protective Services as other schools did. But they, they used every resource to help my son in his, uh, with his school. Now my son is uh, ready to go to college. He has taken all his region and passed them and uh, he wants to major in social work. Mr. Andrew made all the parents a promise at Democracy Prep that all our children will receive a quality education and their children will be able to go to the college of their choice and I'm a proven testimony of that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Felda Luper. Hello, my name is Felda Luper, and I'm here for the Washington Leadership Academy. And I don't have a written speech. I just want to say very importantly that when, in, when I was in high school, I had the opportunity to work on Capitol Hill. The experiences there, being able to walk through the offices in Congress and be on the floor of the House and on the Senate, changed my life in so many profound ways. Instead of just going to undergraduate school, I ended up going to graduate school and living and working abroad, traveling abroad, expanding my horizons and learning a whole different way about the world. I think when kids have the opportunity to be engaged in this, it changes them as well. Here I came from a, a, a small school and now I come to this opportunity and here are kids fighting over the newspaper to find out what's going on because they knew what just happened. Now, what, how did the press um, exemplify this? The way the children I worked with changed me and the way we learned things, it was just a totally different experience. And I, I hope that you will give the opportunity for, for these children in this school to have that opp opportunity as well. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Calvin Hadley. Good evening. Uh, my name is Calvin Hadley and I'm an educational professional here in uh, D.C. as well as a resident. And I support the Washington Leadership Academy for one reason, exposure. Um, students in Ward 7 and Ward 8 deserve to be exposed to civic education as well as the rest of our students in this country. I am a testament to what exposure can do to the life of a young child and I sincerely hope that students growing up uh, in environments that don't necessarily have access to civic education on the same levels as WLA is attempting to give them uh, would eventually have that access and would eventually be able to uh, pursue careers in civic education, pursue careers in public policy. I think that my life was changed because I was exposed to programs like the Washington Leadership Academy and it's my sincere hope that students in the future, students in, in, in specifically, I, I bring up Word 7 and 8 again, um, because I believe that students in that environment have the right uh, and really we have the responsibility to give them that exposure. Um, I fully support the Washington, Washington Leadership Academy and I hope you do the same. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well that, that concludes uh, the hearings tonight. If you didn't get enough tonight, we're doing it again tomorrow night. <laughs> Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming out and I apologize to those of you, about 20 people, uh, who didn't get to speak, but if you want to submit something we'll, for the record, we'd appreciate that. Um, to the people who were speaking not specifically about schools, while that was not the agenda, we, we hear you, a lot of these issues are raised uh, in other fora and there are things that we also consider, we're not considering them tonight. So no, it's not a waste of time to use this, your two minutes to, uh, you know, express yourself on more global educational issues. Uh, but tonight, you know, we do appreciate the fact that so many of you are supporting these applications. Drive safely and have a good evening. Wait, wait, one second. Um, the doors directly across where you may have come in are locked. And if you go out, you'll get trapped in between the inside door and the outside. So please go so all the way down. So you can come back tomorrow night. <laughs> all the way down the hall to the, to the left. 
is a door out to the parking lot, which you can't exit, then you have to get out of that parking lot to get back to the street. So thank you. <laughs>